Welcome to From His Heart, where today, Pastor Jeff Shreve will help you overcome one of the biggest problems you may have in life. Travel with him into the seductive land of the giants to find victory over the giant of lust. We're in a series called Land of the Giants, and today we want to talk about one of the biggest giants, one of the baddest giants, one of the most formidable giants, the giant of lust. The word for lust in the Bible, in the Greek language, is epithumia. It's a compound word, epi, which means, to, uh, which means upon, and thumia, which means an urge or a passion. Lust is this urge, this passion that comes upon a person to want that which is forbidden. And so we want to talk about how do you defeat and have victory over the giant of lust. James gives us insight in his little epistle. James, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus. James, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church. He says this, James 1, verse 13. Let no one say... When he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved Brethren, how can you defeat the giant of lust? How can you have victory over the giant of lust? Now listen, now this giant is not uh, one that you fight one day, defeat him one day, and you never face him again. He comes back over and over and over again, just like the giant of anger does. You have to deal with that uh, all the time, in, not, not in terms of every second of every day, but, but you never get to the place where that's not an issue anymore. That can always be an issue, and uh, as soon as you let your guard down, that's when you're going to get popped. So how do you have victory on a consistent basis over the giant of anger? I want to share with you three R's. Three R's to victory. First R, recognize that lust is an internal issue. Lust is an internal issue. Lust is an inside job. Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he said to them, speaking uh, concerning uh, the, the Pharisees had gotten on Jesus because he said, your disciples don't wash their hands in the ceremonial way. They transgress the traditions of the elders. Why is that? And Jesus said, why do you transgress the command of God for your traditions? And their, their big thing about going through all this rigmarole, how they washed their hands in just this certain way before they ate. Now, the disciples washed their hands before they ate, just like uh, every good little boy and girl it washes up before you eat. But they had this whole rigmarole about how you were to do that. And Jesus said, guys, you don't understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the mouth. And what comes out of the mouth is what's in the heart. And Jesus said in Matthew 15, 19, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. That comes out of the heart. That's in the human heart. Now, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that when we come to Christ, he gives us a new heart. But the old heart and the old nature and the flesh is not separated from us. It's still there. That's why the Bible says, uh, it says in Galatians chapter 5, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. Your flesh wants to sin. 
And your flesh, even as a believer, is there. It's the old flesh from your Adamic nature. You have a new man living inside, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the new nature, but the old nature is still there. It's not in control. It has been rendered powerless, but it has not been rendered speechless, and it will bark out orders for you, and the flesh loves the flesh. It longs for the flesh as we talk about sexual lust. The flesh loves the flesh and longs for the flesh, and lust is an inside job. So know this about lust. God has given us legitimate desires, legitimate desires that he puts in the human life, in the human heart, legitimate desires. Let me give you three. Food is a legitimate desire. Sleep, a legitimate desire. Sex is a legitimate desire in the confines of marriage. God created sex, not Hugh Hefner. Sex is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it's only to be practiced in the confines, in the safe confines of marriage. So what is lust? Lust is a perversion of a legitimate desire. A perversion of a legitimate desire. You know who the poster child is for insatiable lust? Solomon, Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, is the son of David and Bathsheba. And we know about uh, Bathsheba and David. How did their relationship start out? With lust. And so they have, David has a lust issue, a lust problem, and he has, uh, he's multiplied wives, which it says Deuteronomy 17, 17. He's not supposed to do that. He multiplied wives. Then he has the son Solomon. And remember, the Lord says that uh, the, the iniquity of the fathers is visited on the sons to the third and fourth generation. The iniquity, that doesn't mean the, the consequences or the, 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 uh, you're guilty for sin comes on the sons. The iniquity, that means the twistedness, twistedness, that means the weakness, that means the problem of the fathers is shown up in the sons. Abraham had a problem with lying. Isaac, his son, had a problem with lying. Jacob, his son, had a huge problem with lying. David has a problem with lust. Solomon has a huge problem with lust. You say, how do you know that? Because he had 700 wives. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, the deeds of the flesh are evident. And he lists 15 things. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, and things like these, of which I forewarned you that I also forewarned you, those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He lists 15 things. The first three all are sexual temptations. Immorality, impurity, sensuality. Sensuality is unbridled lust. Immorality is the Greek word pornea, from which we get our word pornography from. It's a smorgasbord of sexual uh, sin. And then immor uh, uncleanness, moral uncleanness. Immorality, impurity, sensuality. The first three of the deeds of the flesh all deal with sexual sin. Hey, lust is an inside job. Second R, realize that lust is what the devil works with. Now, if the devil dried up and evaporated, you'd still have trouble with lust. I'd still have trouble with lust. Why? Because lust is an inside job. Lust is a deed of the flesh. But the devil works on that weakness in us, and he is called in Scripture the tempter, and the tempter uses our weaknesses to try and trip us up. So the devil works on you and me. Now notice the progression of how he works. First, he works on your specific desires. It says in verse 14, each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. His own lust. You know, not all, we don't all have the same uh, proclivities and we don't have the same Achilles heel and we don't have the same uh, weaknesses. Now, lust in general is a weakness for most men, sexual lust, but it can come in different forms. Some people are sexually uh, tempted by same-sex attraction. 
Now, that's, that's a condition of the fall. That's the way some people are wired, and the devil will tempt that way. And so he will prey on your specific desire. And so from desire, he moves to deception. Each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Carried away and enticed. Interesting, those words in the Greek. They mean to draw out like you would draw a fish out of the weeds to the lure. To entice means to bait a hook or bait a trap. The devil is smart, and uh, he, he knows that you don't go fishing without bait on the hook. And so he knows, and he has, just like when we fish, we have different lures and different things we put into the water. The devil has that too. Here's a, a fishing lure. It's called a fluke, for those that didn't know. You say, Jeff, how do you know that? Because it's written on the side. It says fluke. That's the only reason I know that. <laughs> I'm not a fisherman. But see, this is, it has a really cool little tail. And so the devil will put that on the line. He'll put that in the water and say, look at that. Don't you, look, wouldn't you like that? You say, there's a hook there. And the devil says, don't look at that. Just look at this. This is the good part. And so maybe some people will say, no, I recognize I'm not going to bite on that. And he said, oh, you don't want that? He said, well, I have this. I have this. This, look at this one. This one spins. It's called buzz bait. Quinn told me that today. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> buzz bait. And it's got this really fancy stuff here. And, uh, you know, under that fancy stuff, there's a hook. There's a hook there. Stephanie Bright gave me this, and this is nice. It has a little plastic thing on it so I don't hurt myself. But... Uh, the devil will use this. You don't like the fish? Well, how about this thing that buzzes? And if you don't go for that, he says, well, I have this one. Check out this one. Look at the colors of this one. And you put that in the water and bounce that around, and it's shiny, and it looks good. Hey, the devil is a deceiver, and he will make you think, oh, this would be so great. This would satisfy my need. This really catches my eye. The devil works through deception. He says, don't look at the hook, only look at the bait. The devil works to bring forth death. Works on your desire, works to deceive you, works to get you to disobey, works to bring forth death, to steal and kill and destroy. When the devil takes the hook, then he's hooked. And what happens when he's hooked? Then he's reeled in. The devil doesn't practice catch and release. You are hooked, and then you're cooked. You're gutted and grilled. You uh, experience death. I experience death. The wages of sin is death. And when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. First R, recognize that lust is an internal issue. Second R, realize that lust is what the devil works with. And third R, remember God's pathway to victory. God has a way for us to defeat the giant of lust. We have to put it into practice. Let me share with you five Ds. First D, don't play with fire. When it comes to the issue of sexual lust, don't play around with fire. Now, there are two Proverbs in the Bible, 31 Proverbs total, two Proverbs that are devoted to the man who would go after the seductive woman, the seductress, the adulterous woman, as the Scripture calls her, the, the one who traffics in sexual immorality. And it says this in Proverbs 7.25, do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. Don't go there. Why? Because that's a slippery slope. And if you play with fire, you will get burned.
When lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Don't play with fire. Second D, don't linger in the lust. Don't linger in the lust. Proverbs 22, verse 3. The prudent sees the evil and hides himself. But the naive go on and are punished for it. Don't linger in the lust. Put a guard over your mind. The Bible says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And when those thoughts come, you've got to put a soldier there, a century there, a guard there that says, halt, who goes there? I'm not going to let this go into my mind if it's impure, if it's lustful. John Piper says you have the five-second rule. And in five seconds, you've got to get rid of that thought. Because if the look turns to, to lust and you start to think that through, then you're, you're done. You're a goner. Martin Luther used to say, I can't keep the birds from flying over my head, but I can sure keep them from making a nest in my hair, your hair, my scalp. But you get the idea. You, you, can, you can say, hey, these thoughts that come in, but I'm not receiving those. So don't linger in the lust. Third D. Don't fight this temptation, flee it. Don't fight it, flee it. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.22, now flee from youthful lust. Paul is writing to Timothy, his young son in the faith. Timothy, who's a young guy, lust is really, uh, it really goes after the young people. Now flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace which though, with those who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. L lust will soil your heart it will dirty your heart he says flee it flee it first corinthians chapter 6 paul says flee immorality every other sin that a man commits is outside of the body but the immoral man sins against his own body or do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and that you are not your own for you've been bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and then fourth D, don't magnify the pleasure, magnify the cost. Magnify the cost. Proverbs 7, the admonition against sexual immorality says, do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths, for many are the victims she has cast down, and numerous are all her slain. Her house is the way to Sheol descending to the chambers of death. Don't go there, because if you go there, you're going to slide in to her grasp, and you're going to find out she lives in death. Her house is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. The devil will tell you, don't look at the hook. Just look at the pleasure. Look at how you would love to, to nibble on this. Look how you would love to take a bite of this. Just focus in on that. And the temptation and the deception is to magnify the pleasure and to minimize the consequences. We need to flip that. We need to magnify the consequences. Adrian Rogers used to say about sexual immorality. He said sexual immorality is a hurtful, heinous, hateful sin. There's nothing that will harden your heart more toward God than sexual immorality. Sexual immorality was the cause of the downfall of Babylon, of Greece, of Rome. Why is that? Because people who treat sex lightly always treat other people lightly. Always. There's a big cost to pay for that. I was talking to a counselor friend of mine one day in the Dallas area, and he said, we were on this subject of pornography, and he said, you know, I had a, a guy that had come to see me, and he had a problem with that. And he met a girl in uh, their church, and she had come out of that lifestyle of being all involved in, in terrible things like that and had to get a lot of healing, and they met, and they fell in love, and they're getting ready to get married and he said, this guy was on the internet one night, and he was tempted, and the look turned to lust, and he began to explore things on the internet, and he was watching a video, and when he saw the girl's face, he saw that it was his fiance being abused. And he saw all the pain that she had come through in her life, and he said, I almost threw up. 
And he said, that did it for me. I said, no way am I going back to that stuff. That stuff is from hell. That stuff destroys lives. Don't magnify the pleasure. Magnify the cost. And the fifth D, depend on the Lord and enlist a faithful friend. You know, we confess our sins to the Lord, yes. But the Bible says, James 5, 16, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Bible says in Romans 13, verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh with regard to its lusts. Hey, that, that old nature is still there in my heart, in your heart, in every Christian's heart, in Paul's heart. Paul said, the good that I do, I don't do. Don't do. The evil that I don't want to do, I, I find myself doing. In me that is in my flesh, there is, dwells no good thing. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? How do you deal with this? You put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. Adrian Rogers said that when he was pastoring, he had a little sign on his desk that said this, he who does not want to fall down ought not to walk in slippery places. You don't get close to the edge. You don't play with the fire. You don't linger in lust. You get away from that, and you realize, hey, God, what you say in your word is true, and Lord, you say in your word that you will help me. God is my helper. And, Lord, I have a problem in this area. God, help me. And the Lord says, I want to help you. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh with regard to its lusts. Listen, I know that this kind of message and this subject hits lots of people, especially in our world today, lots of young people especially. But, hey, it hits older people. I had a man tell me just a couple of, of weeks ago, he said, he was in his 70s, he said, you know, I've just been battling this sin for decades. It was the sin of pornography. It doesn't just go away because you get to be uh, 30 years old. doesn't go away because you get married. doesn't go away because you turn 50, 60, 70, whatever. It's there, and it's a battle, and it's a big giant. But the Lord says, listen, you come to me. There's forgiveness in Jesus Christ, and there's power in Jesus Christ. And I heard when I was in college something I've never forgotten, and it said this, when it comes to sexual temptation, don't ever quit fighting. Don't ever just give up and say, well, I can't, I can't beat this. So if you can't beat them, join them and just give in. No. You keep saying, Lord, today I'm walking in victory and I'm going to run from evil and I'm going to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and perseverance with those who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. May God give us victory over the giant of lust. My friend, thanks for watching today. We always like to close out the broadcast by asking you this simple question. Do you know for certain that you have a personal relationship with Jesus? If not, now is the time to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I can't save myself. But I believe that you died on the cross for my sins that you rose again from the dead, that you are God in the flesh, and I surrender my life to you. Come into my life, forgive me of all my sins, be my Lord and Savior. I promise to follow you all the days of my life. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can be of help to you. Hey, you are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, The Giant of Lust, is from Pastor Jeff's powerful series, The Land of the Giants, how to deal with your biggest problems and it's available in the format of your choice when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. The Bible is an amazing book. 
It's God's mind in print, the living word of the living God. Now, From His Heart Ministries has had the privilege of sharing this living word of God with people all over the world through radio and television and the internet. Now, we're coming to a very important time for our ministry. It's the end of our fiscal year. Now, our prayer is that we can close out this fiscal year strong so that we can take advantage of opportunities to reach more people for Christ in the next 12 months. Now, as you may know, I am much more interested in telling people about Jesus than asking for ministry support. But here's the truth. If we're to keep growing and impacting lives through From His Heart, then we need to meet the financial challenges involved head on and with the utmost of integrity. Now remember, I take no income from this ministry. I am a volunteer and a generous supporter. So I'm asking you to join me to help us reach our $200,000 goal by June 30th. Just ask the Lord concerning this request and then follow through with whatever amount He puts on your heart. No gift is too big or too small. So thanks for your prayers and financial support. Know that you are dearly loved and appreciated. Hey, together, God is using us to make a difference for the kingdom. To thank you for your fiscal year end gift this month, please request Pastor Jeff's powerful seven message series, The Land of the Giants, How to Deal with Your Biggest Problems, when you contact us today. And when you make your gift, you'll also receive the booklet, When You Don't Like Yourself. Call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. And thank you for your special fiscal year end gift today. And thank you for watching From His Heart today, the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. You can find out more about that plan. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real